Best Africa. And still with me today is Humphrey Gathungu. He's a portfolio manager at Stanlib. Joining the conversation at this point as well is Ramachandran Otapath. He's the CEO at Choppies. And joining us from our Nairobi bureau is Ramamurthy Thiagarajan. He's a regional strategy and operations director at Nakumat Holdings. Welcome to all of you. And uh, thanks to Ramachandran and Ramamurthy for joining us this afternoon. Humphrey, let's just pick up uh, with you here because in the first part of the show we were exploring some of the challenges that a retailer faces in setting up shop on the continent. The first thing that uh, seemed to have cropped up is effective distribution networks and then infrastructure that is supportive of that. Just how much of a challenge is it in your books? Um, in our books, when we look at um, the retailers, obviously we're looking at uh, investing in a wide number of uh, retailers and certainly they state that as uh, quite a bit of a challenge um, and it's one of the biggest challenges. Uh, from a growth perspective, I think we also see affordability as being uh, yet another challenge that we must uh, take into account. Um, I remember reading a report by SAB Miller who say that, uh, for instance, it takes about um, an hour's labor in South Africa for you to be able to afford a beer, but that goes up to about two hours uh, when you go to Nigeria or Kenya. So that tells you the level of affordability. So when you look at the opportunity and look at the rising middle class, uh, the more that middle class uh, rises, the more uh, the products will become affordable uh, to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ramachandra, yeah. let's look at site selection because that's a paramount. In your books, have the latecomers missed out? Because I'm saying the easy markets, the major cities are well penetrated and opportunities now lie in the more remote centers of any economy. In Africa, the site selection is going to be always going to be a challenge because the, the population is uh, living in remote locations. And to make a business sustainable uh, with a smaller uh, population is going to be a challenge always. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always find that getting lo uh, goods also to those locations is going to be a challenge. How has this uh, impacted the way you do business, how you do business? It's a significant cost, especially the logistic part is a significant cost on getting into locations. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a challenge. It's not going to be an urbanized, even though the uh, talk of uh, 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 significant ur urbanization, it is still uh, going to take a long time to yeah. get to the levels of uh, urbanization and the polarization of population is going to take time. Uh, Ramamurthy, let's get your perspective on this. Uh, talk us through your experience when it comes to effective distribution networks and infrastructure. We've seen many of South Africa's retailers, for example, start to focus on centralized distribution centers to manage that cost base a little bit more effectively. Your experience with regards to that? We do not have much of a challenge in Kenya in terms of our, uh, our logistics. But uh, we have uh, possible uh, challenges in uh, transferring the goods to Rwanda, uh, even Tanzania, and also in Uganda. And uh, these are all the challenges that we have. Within Kenya, uh, we are able to manage uh, uh, without much of a difficulty, even though the red road, uh, road network is being developed. And, and we are able to manage not much of a problem. But at the end of the day, uh, if you look at the modern retail, it is again an 80-20 scenario. And 80% and is informal sector and 20% is the modern retail. And, and uh, there is a lot of scope and opportunities wide open. So that is why we have come out with uh, different formats. And we have got the hypermarkets, we got the supermarkets, and we also have the convenience stores. And, and we are also planning to introduce the express concepts so that at least we can reach out to all the people across the across the country. Ramamurthy, it's interesting that uh, uh, Ramachandran, rather, it's interesting that Ramamurthy has highlighted this. I mean, let's start looking at how you position yourself for profitable growth in a post-recessionary environment here, because things like customer reach uh, comes in in a very big way. You know, tailoring your your products to meet specific uh, segments and specific channels. How much attention do you pay to economic data? when you start uh, looking at uh, where you're going to be doing business and how? We, we concentrate mainly on the economic data to make decisions. Those are only informed decisions, actually. Mm -hmm. we, we analyze uh, economic activities in an area, plus the uh, for development prospects surrounding in that area and the population growth. Mm -hmm. And if you look at uh, South African retail, 
without any foreign influence or anything it has done reasonably well over the years so that's exactly so why i mean yes. you've started off in botswana yes. and now moving into, into south into africa the, which is yes. interesting because uh, we m see many retailers mm. looking mm. at retailers other industries as well looking mm. at south africa mm. as the gateway to the rest of africa you're yes. doing it uh, the, in the reverse, reverse direction yeah. yes we we've been operating in botswana and, uh, along with this uh, major retailers in south africa for the past 15 to 20 years and uh, we felt it is time, time that we organically can grow into the neighboring provinces in South Africa. That's what exactly we did mm -hmm. and we, we reasonably did in, uh, in one year, in two years we got almost 17 outlets in the northwest and Limpopo provinces. Humphrey, now more than ever it's possibly most important to think about the market that you're targeting, who you're catering to right now. What sense are you getting of uh, the African consumer and where they're spending? Because a lot of the focus uh, is shifting away from your discretionary items as uh, consumers' pockets come under pressure and focusing on uh, you know, what you need, the must-haves. Certainly, and uh, we certainly see that and we like uh, the defensive nature of uh, the, the staples that a lot of the retailers are able to offer. And the reason we like that is in an environment where growth is very constrained, uh, if you look at the developed world, and also if you look at in Africa, while still growing very strongly, there's still a lot of challenges. So we like that defensive nature that uh, the staples, the must-haves that you have, you know, food is something that you cannot do without. But more importantly, um, there's also a growth opportunity because, uh, like I mentioned earlier, that uh, the penetration of retail is still very, very low. If you look at Africa's population, uh, it's still very, very uh, rural op uh, population. About mm -hmm. uh, a third of it is rural and projected to be about 50% urban. So as you move towards that urbanization, then you will see more and more people needing to buy from a store and hence that is a growth aspect. So to us, it's, um, it's something that's almost perfect because you have both a defensive nature and a growth nature coming in from the increased penetration. No matter how defensive your product is though, uh, Ramamurthy, you've got to take into consideration affordability so what's your assessment of the pricing power you currently hold? Uh, let me tell you some, give you some statistics today. Uh, you look at the East African, uh, the population and the market today. For the formal retail, it's about 7 billion US dollars. That is a kind of a market which is available. And, and there are only about three, four homegrown players who are managing this one as of now. And, and there is a lot of potential for uh, many people, they are looking at this market as a potential market for themselves. And, and but in spite of the fact that not all the, the products are made in East Africa today. If you look at about 55% of the product portfolio are available uh, locally, and more than 45% is coming from outside. And uh, that is the logistic challenges that people have. But Kenya uh, has got a port, we are able to manage that one. But landlocked countries like Uganda, Tanzania, Uganda and uh, Rwanda, I think there are some challenges. And the pricing for the customers when it reaches there, it's totally different from what is available for the Kenyan people here. Mm -hmm. The population is growing and uh, the middle class is slowly growing in, in Kenyan market we have seen. Even in East Africa slowly it grows, but that is a very big opportunity for the people uh, to develop the modern retail in this country today. Yeah. And one more benefit what we have in the East Africa today is the skill availability. The people are available for employment here and that is not a big deal the cost is not very high for you to come and do it here. There is a lot of real estate developments which are coming in here, and then we could see in the, down the line in the next 24 months, you could see a lot of uh, shopping malls which will be a destination for uh, a retail shopping, which is all cropping up, and a lot of investments which are coming in here. A lot of local investors, the local uh, uh, the, the business people, they are investing quite a lot of money here. I could see more than about $200 million mm -hmm. invested in the real estate for the shopping mall development in this country in the next uh, two to three years time. Yeah. And it's a great opportunity for the homegrown businesses to grow along with the, with the destinations. Well, it, uh, it puts into the spotlight as well supplier agreements being pivotal to success, Ramachandran. And if you get that right, economies of scale, one would assume, would work in your favor as well alongside that wider range of products. So what's your view on that and, uh, you know, supplier agreements getting them to work in your favor? Th that's the most key uh, factor in pricing uh, strategy of the organization. So, uh, Supplier agreement drives the prices, and we, without that, we we can't compete in in a modern economy like South Africa. Yeah, that plays the most key factor. Well,